a common pattern in mobile application development with the UX component where you embed one UX component into another UX component and the idea here is that you break your application up into multiple UX components each of which is designed for a specific task so you can see in this application over here we have a list control that is showing all of our customers it's the customers in the North Winds database and when I click on a row in the list we get to see all of the orders for that customer so for this order here there were six, cust uh, six different uh, orders for this customer if we go back now say to this customer we can see there are 11 orders here and we can just navigate through all of those orders um, by dragging on the slider or by pressing on the button. If we go back to design mode we can see that the structure of this UX component here is that we have a panel navigator which contains two panel cards. The first panel card contains the list control and this list control shows all of my customers and then the second uh, panel card has an embedded UX component that shows the orders. So in this particular case we've broken this application down into two different components but of course uh, a larger application might be uh, deconstructed into multiple uh, separate uh, components. So let's go and take a look now at how this was all put together. So first now let's go take a look at this uh, embedded UX component which is displaying orders. So I'm going to go now and open up the builder here and we can see that what we have over here is a uh, panel card uh, and inside the panel card we have uh, our controls we have order ID, customer ID, employee ID and order date. The component itself is data bound so it's been bound to the Northwind database and if we look at our binding we can see that we're bound to the orders table in the Northwind database and then the uh, controls on the UX component have been bound to the corresponding fields in the uh, orders table so the order ID control on this UX component is bound to the order ID control or the order ID field in the uh, orders table so there's our data binding and then you can see next what we've done is uh, we've put a placeholder control here which is where the slider will appear so the placeholder control is um, is this control over there then we've put navigation buttons on which we define by just going to define controls and choosing uh, record navigation uh, buttons and then uh, finally we went um, to the um, server side event and we defined the on dialog initialize event to load the primary keys however before we define this uh, event we also need to define an argument because we want to pass in the value of an argument which would be the current customer ID and only show orders uh, for the customer that matches the argument value that we pass in so let's go back to controls here go to menu and look at arguments so you can see that we've defined an argument called arg underbar customer ID and we've just set a default value to ALFKI so that we can test it um, in design mode here so when we go and test it we can see that we're going to go and fetch the um, record for ALF key. Now going back to design mode let's go to our server side event and the on dialog initialize we used um, action scripting so far you know we used the um, uh, load primary keys for parent table action so let's just go here and edit what we did so you can see that we um, specified that we'd like to load the primary keys then we specified and this is very important that we'd like to filter uh, the table and our filter expression was customer ID equals and then this argument so we inserted the argument over there so now we're only going to go and fetch the customer keys for those customer IDs that match the value of the argument and the default value of the argument as you recall was ALF key so that's why when we go to working preview now and we look at it we can see that we're currently so we're continuing our video now so when we go to working preview we see that we're seeing the data for ALF key because that was the default value 
for the argument. So now let's basically close this out and I'm going to come back and describe what's going on with this back button uh, a little later on. So now um, let's go back here now and go back to the customer table. So you can see here this is where we've embedded the uh, orders um, uh, uh, UX component into the uh, parent component inside this panel card and now let's take a look here at uh, some of the options for the embedded object. So first you can see that when we embedded it we um, gave the uh, component a specific alias so you can see here we specified an, an alias of UX underbar orders and that's important because we're going to need to uh, uh, synchronize the component uh, um, using its alias um, and uh, so let's carry on now and then you can also see that uh, when you embed a component it asks you f uh, to bind any of the arguments that were defined by that component so uh, the uh, child component here defines an argument called arg uh, customer ID and we've specified that this argument is bound to the value of the list control so you can see here the list control is the um, only um, available selection because that's the only control that is uh, on this component so we've specified that this list control is going to populate the argument so uh, having done that we can now go and look at some of the other options here so you can see that we've also specified that this embedded component is going to fill the container so it's going to completely fill this panel card then we've also specified here that um, let's go here that um, we are going to delay render till visible so that means that when the uh, uh, customer component is loaded this embedded object this embedded component here will not actually be run which means that the initial load of the customer component will be quicker because it's not going to um, render the embedded UX uh, component displaying orders until it becomes visible there's no need to display it initially uh, then we've also said that uh, when the um, when this panel card gets uh, gets focus that we'd like to synchronize it so that means that after it's been initially displayed when we go back to the list and then go back to this panel card to display the next customer we'd like to just uh, synchronize um, the uh, records in this panel card so now let's go take a look at the list itself so uh, as you recall when we click on an item in the list that's going to cause the uh, panel card to come into focus so if we go to our list properties here and then click on events we can see that uh, we actually we don't need that code over there so I'm going to get rid of that uh, we can see that we're doing a panel set active and we're going to set uh, focus to the um, the panel underbar orders uh, panel so that's what so that's why when I go here and I click on um, this row that causes the uh, panel to get focus and then the embedded object is rendered so the embedded object uh, uh, is rendered through an Ajax callback but the second time I click over here the embedded object already has been rendered and all we're doing is uh, synchronizing the data in this uh, embedded object but um, we need to actually define code to go ahead and do that synchronization so so um, of course we specified here that when that panel card gets focused we'd like to synchronize it but we now need to go and actually specify what that synchronization code looks like so let's go back now to the um, embedded object here and we can see that in the on dialog initialize event we're loading the primary keys but now I'm going to just take this code and copy it there and then go to the on synchronize event and then just paste it in over there as well so now the same code that loads the primary keys when the component is loaded initially will also run when the component is uh, synchronized so let's pause now and pick this up in the next video so we're continuing um, our discussion about using multiple embedded UX components to break a, uh, an application into smaller pieces and let's just go and uh, f uh, put in a debug one statement here to illustrate this uh, point about the synchronization the unsynchronized event firing so we'll go back to our customer table now and now go over to working preview 
and so now the first time I click on a row we uh, set focus to the panel which causes the uh, embedded uh, component to run the first time because we said delay render until it gets focus. Now we go back here and now we click on a second row. Now the embedded component, the UX orders component has already been run once so now we're going to just simply synchronize it. So when I click over here you can see that the on synchronize event is going to fire and then I'll go ahead and run it and now it has synchronized uh, this embedded component so now I'm only seeing the uh, um, the 18 orders for this customer B E R G S. Go back now and choose say um, ALF key and now that synchronize event fires and you can see now that we've gone and fetched the primary keys for the customer called ALF key. So uh, the final topic that I'd like to discuss is the behavior of this back button now. So when I click this back button over here, we're going we're gonna to go back and give focus to uh, the panel in the parent component that contains the list. So you can see there we go back to the parent component. So let me just go here quickly and turn off this debug one so we, uh, we don't need to see that anymore and then save it and then go back to the customer table. So um, the uh, uh, parent uh, panel that we'd like to give focus to is called panel underbar customer list but this panel is uh, inside the parent component it's not a panel inside this embedded object so if we go back to this embedded object here and look at this back button we can see that uh, the code here is doing the following uh, the first thing that it does is get a pointer to the parent object so remember that uh, this is inside the uh, UX underbar orders component and we're trying to set focus to the panel underbar customer list panel uh, inside the parent component so uh, P now is a pointer to the parent component and now we're going to say that if P is valid in other words if there was a parent that was actually found then call the parent objects panel set active method and set the active panel to panel underbar customer list. Now the reason that we have this if statement over here is that when we run this component by itself, so if I go here and press the back button now, there is no parent component so we don't want um, uh, a JavaScript error so you can see now that nothing happens and the reason that nothing happens is that the um, P here is false therefore this code block over there uh, does not execute. So what we've shown in this video is how the um, um, uh, two separate components, one that is displaying customers and one that is displaying orders uh, can be used to build um, a bigger application. The uh, orders component is embedded into the uh, customer component and is linked to the current value of the uh, customer ID uh, field. Um, the final thing that I don't think I pointed out was that the list itself, let's go to this list itself and look at its definition. The list itself is based on a SQL data source. You can see we're going to the uh, Northwind connection. We're getting uh, data from the customer table. But the important thing here is that this list has been configured to return the value of customer ID. This is very important because uh, the argument that is used to filter the orders is uh, being populated by the value in the list control. So we want the list control to always return customer ID uh, when you tap on a row in the list. So what we've just shown over here is a very powerful technique for uh, breaking large applications into smaller applications and how uh, you can embed one component into another component and then set argument values um, from the parent component into the child component and then synchronize the child component when it gets uh, when it needs to be refreshed. Thank you very much for watching.